Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome once again to Walking Through the Word Ministry, uh, brought to you by Old Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where we're pastored by the Reverend Thurman Cunningham Sr. My name's Tyrone Cunningham, and once again, welcome. We're still in the series Divine Dysfunction, Divine Dysfunction. We'll be coming from tonight, Genesis chapter 13, verses 1 through 24. Genesis chapter 30, verses 1 through 24. We'll do a quick recap. The last time we left off, a plan had been had and, and uh, the plot had thickened. Uh, Laban had put his, Laban had put his uh, eldest daughter off on uh, his nephew. Jacob had learned quickly that his uncle had a lot of ways that somewhat resembled his mother. And after working seven years for what he thought would be the love of his life, he wakes up the, the morning after his wedding and he has the eldest daughter in bed with him. So him being, of course, uh, understandably upset about the situation, he goes to his father-in-law at that point, which is Laban, and Laban tells him that it's not right that he should give his younger daughter before his eldest daughter has wed. Right. So Jacob, realizing that there was nothing that he could do about it, he worked seven more years right. for the hand of Rachel. And after him receiving Rachel and he thought that everything would be fine, he worked seven more years. So now he's 21 years in with his uncle. Remember what I said, his uncle is shrewd. His uncle understands the ways of the world. And Jacob is learning quickly that his uncle possibly may not be able to be trusted. All right. <laughs> uh, his love, his life, his, the person that he wanted to be with Rachel. And he had gone into her and she hadn't conceived but his other wife, right. Leah, the one that was least loved by Jacob, God had shown mercy on her, and she had she had birthed four kids. She had birthed at this point. She had birthed four boys for uh, Jacob, hoping that he would love her. She had birthed Reuben. She had birthed Simeon. She had birthed Levi, and she had birthed uh, Judah. Mm -hmm. She had four four boys already, and Jacob still loved. Rachel, mm -hmm. more than he loved Leah. Right. And this is where we find ourselves in uh, chapter 30, verses 1. And Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children. Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. She's adamant about it. She has said that if she didn't have a child by Jacob, if he didn't impregnate her, I said before I started this lesson, I told some people earlier that I may actually tag this M.A., uh -huh. Mature Audience Intended. Uh -huh. Because there's some, there some information that may be a little sensitive, may be a little hard for sensitive ears. Uh -huh. right. But uh, he had gone into his wife, and he and his wife couldn't conceive, but the least loved of them had received mercy from God. And he had given her four boys. And all she wanted was the love of her husband. All she wanted was her husband to love her for giving her the four boys. But he still loved Rachel. And it seems as though Rachel is having a temper tantrum here. All right. It seems as though Rachel has lost her bearing because she has envied her sister. It says here in Proverbs 27 and 4, wrath is cruel. And, the, and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Mm. Envy is the worst thing that you can have, especially for a sibling, right. a brother, a sister, anybody right. really, because it brings about feelings of hatred and feelings of discontent. And sometimes it makes you do things that you ordinarily wouldn't do when you're envying someone. Mm. And she tells her husband, give me a child. Or else I'll die. Wow. No, the strong words. Right. Those are strong words. And he was in his response in two says, and Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in God's steed? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Alright. It's not me, baby. I'm doing all I can do. Apparently. My seed is fertile because your 
sister has four children yeah. in their mind. Yeah. Running around looking like me. I know they're making me sick. <laughs> I know it's not something that's easy to ingest, but at the, at the end of the day, you got to realize, <laughs> baby, it's not me. Something's going on with you, and it must be because God has shut your womb. Job, Job 9, 12, Behold, he taketh away who can hinder him. Who will say unto him, What dost thou? Job 11 and 10, If he cut off and shut up or gather together, then who can hinder him? God is in charge of all of the things that we go through. Right, right. God is in charge. There's nothing that I can do. I'm doing all that I can do. I'm working hard. But it just hasn't happened for you because it's not God's will for you to have children at this point. It makes you think sometimes that I reflect back on the plot that was had on Jacob. Now, Rachel understood at this point, I'm sure, that this may have been a conspiracy. The more I look at it, the more I think about it, Rachel possibly may have had something to do with it because she had to be privy to the fact that her eldest sister would be wed to her husband, the guy that she had been looking at for seven years. Remember I said she had been blinking her eyes and smiling and giving woo eyes at him all this time knowing that she wouldn't be the one that her father would give to him. So Rachel here has been shut up by God and there's nothing that Jacob can do about it. Psalm 127 and 1, except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain, unless the Lord says it, right. it won't be done. Right. It won't come to fruition unless God says so. Three, and she said, behold, my maid be build her. Go into her, and she shall bear unto my knees that I may also have children by her. Right. Now we've gone to the extreme. Now we put another woman in your husband's bed because envy has driven you to the point of insanity. Wow. I would call it. But it's not the first time that it happened. You remember Abraham and Sarah had the same problem and she offered her Hagar, her handmaid, and Ishmael came. We know how that turned out. They got expelled from the house because at the end of the day, Sarah couldn't take it anymore. All right. This woman walking around with your child run, walking behind her, she couldn't take it anymore. And she blamed Abraham for it. She said that I put all this on you. This is a, this is a lesson that you got to listen to now. These things are done and these things are real and they're done so that we can learn from them. Envy is not a good thing. Now at least Sarah had a uh, a motive that was genuine. She was trying to fulfill God's will. She thought that she could help God out. This woman here, who's throwing a temper tantrum, the first part of this, the first part of this lesson, she just wants a child because she's jealous of her sister. She's willing to give you to another woman so that she could bear a child for her. Through her, through this woman, she's willing to give her husband up the prized possession of her life, the person that she should love and cherish the most, she's willing to share wow. his affection with another woman just so that she could birth a child through this woman. Wow. And she gave wow. her, and she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid to wife. And Jacob went in unto her, poor Jacob, <laughs> trying his best to do whatever he can to make his wife happy. That's all he wants. That's all he wanted is, is, is Rachel smiling. Don't laugh about it. It's the truth. Jacob is doing all that he can do to make his wife happy. Remember, she said she want to die. Well, baby, I tell you what. Remember I said he'll make Mature audience intended. I'll do it, but it's for you. I'll go into it. I don't want to. Reluctant. Can't you see him dragging right. himself on in there? They won't do it. All right, man. <laughs> and Bilhah conceived and bowed Jacob a son. Apparently it's not Jacob. Uh -huh. Apparently his seed is fertile. He, she's not shooting blood. Uh -huh. Every time he goes, something happens. Every time he goes, remember I said, but you all right. Take the children out. All right, all right, all right. Take the children out of the room. All right. 
6 says, Rachel said, God has judged me and has also heard my voice and has given me a son. Therefore, call she his name Dan, her first child through Jacob by another woman that she's put into this, into this woman's baby. Envy will drive you crazy. Jealousy will make you insane. It will make you think that the lucid is sane. It will make you think that 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 is wrong is right. You can't think straight when you are envious of another right, person. Right, right. When you're jealous of another person, right. God doesn't intend for those feelings to continue. He certainly doesn't want them to fester, but they've gotten a chance to fester in Rachel, and she's making the move now. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid conceived again and bad Jacob a son, a second son. Don't laugh. He's an overachiever. He wants to make her doubly happy. If one will make you happy, two will make you ecstatic. Two will make you just, just make you a lady. All right, all right. With the fact that I'm doing all that I can do, and Jacob has, he is, like I say, reluctant. I'm pretty sure. Because he loves Rachel. Not wanting to do it, but to make his wife happy, he'll do anything. Isn't that right? My Lord, my Lord. And Bill, how Rachel may conceive again and bear Jacob a second son. Now here's eight. And Rachel said, with great wrestling, have I wrestled with my sister. He, she's not bringing up God. And I have prevailed. I beat out. And she called his name Nephtali. Now, this is how she's reasoning within herself. This is the logic that she's using. That as many children as my husband have by another wife, by another woman, I'm beating my sister out. I know we just had single night ago. So y'all get y'all get luck. Y'all get laugh about it. As many kids as you can have by my handmaid, I'm using this to beat my sister out. Did it again. When Leah saw that she had left Baron, she took Zelpa, her maid, mm. and gave her Jacob to wife. Oh. <laughs> Don't y'all brothers feel for Jacob, though? I mean, I, I mean, he's doing the best that he can do to maintain what his wife wants. And now this wife that he didn't ask for who bad four sons already through him. Remember, those were his. And now because she left off barren, she gives her handmaid to Jacob. Now it's four women <laughs> in the house. One man. Four women in the house and one man. And the only one that Jacob cares about making happy is Rachel. My Lord. The only one in the house that he cares about to make happy is Rachel. Zilpah. Now, and it says in Leah said, and it says in Zilpah, Leah made bear Jacob a son. He's having children right and left. He's planting seeds right and left, and the woman that he loved is sitting there without anything from him. Oh, that much. But she's happy. Do you understand? Let me read this again. Proverbs 27 and 4. Wrath is proof. I need you to ingest this. I need you to conceptualize what I'm saying when I talk about envy. It says that wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Envy will drive you crazy. All right, all right. Looking at what somebody else has and wanting to be yours. My Lord, my Lord. Looking at somebody else's prosperity and won't not cough. You'll work yourself to death for that house. You'll work yourself to death for everything that somebody else has instead of just waiting on God to give you what he has for you. All right, all right, all right. It's here to teach us a lesson. 
It's funny, it, 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 and I mean it to be a little humorous. I want, I want some, I want some humor in it, but I need us to understand that there's something that needs to be learned by these mistakes that these people are making. God can turn wrong and make it right, but the intentions that they have here are wrong. Pastor preached about a few Sundays back. What's behind your front? All right, all right. Why is it that you do what you do? Why is it that you are motivated to work or do the things that you do? We talked about, and I called him and I asked him, I said, because I needed to make sure that this would be all right, that I would bring up something that he brought up. And he said in the pulpit, so it's no secret, he said that at one time when he was at the church uh, uh, church that we attended, I'm not calling any name, he said that they had a tithing yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. They would put everybody's name in the program. Every Sunday, your name would be in the program and how much you tithe. That's right. How much money you had paid. That's right. That's well right. now, this motivated people to pay. Yeah. This motivated people, pastor said it in the pulpit, even him to get caught up in the giving yeah. for the wrong reason. All right. Because you wanted everybody else to see that you tithe more than that person. Yeah. Now God was being blessed. Oh, yeah. The house of God was being blessed. Things were happening and when the church was prospering. But the reason that you were giving was all wrong. So God's blessing didn't, wasn't as fruitful as they could have been with you. Right. Your spirit couldn't feel right because you weren't giving it in the right spirit. These women, although they are, although they are carrying out and fulfilling the promise that God had promised to Abraham and is working through Jacob, that it would be fruitful, that he would multiply, that, 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 that his children would, would outnumber the stars and the sand and the, on, the, on the sea. Although these things were coming to fruition through these people, the reason that these women were doing it was all messed up. All right, all right. And Jacob, like, as I said, with his post self, just getting caught up in the middle of it. Mm. Just need some rest. <laughs> and Leah said, happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. Wow. And she called his name Asher. Wow. She is more concerned with what the folks say than yeah. what her situation is yeah. in the house. Yeah. Your husband hates you. Your husband didn't even want you in the first place. Mm. Your husband is being with you, but he really wants to be with this woman that doesn't have. But now, all you're concerned about is what folks say. Yeah. She said that the daughters are going to say that she's what? Blessed. Yeah. They're going to call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Now, she had four children. She had a jump start. Now, she's still having kids. She left off having kids. Now, she done gave her husband to her handmaid. And a handmaid apparently is fertile too. Everybody in the house is fertile except for Rachel. Mm. Everybody is rocking a baby in the house. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to move on, Pastor. I know that what that means when you say, all right, all right. Move on. Leah happy. Now look at this. This is this takes a crazy twist here. Right. This story, even though it's all convoluted and confusing and conflictual to what we think, at the end of the day, this story takes even a deeper dive. All right. All right. It goes even deeper. Can you believe that? Than what we just went through. Yeah. With them getting, you know, I mean, it gets even deeper. Look at what that. Look at what happened in fourteen. And Reuben went out, the oldest, because remember. Leah had had him first. This is the oldest child of this, this union. This crazy, this divine dysfunction. And Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found a mandrake. Some say it's a fruit. Some say it's the, the root of a fruit. But apparently it's something to behold. In the field. And he brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, give me. I pray thee of thy son's mandrake. She don't even want Leah to have a fruit. She don't want Leah to have nothing. Do you know some people like that don't want nobody else to have anything? I 
can't have nothing for you. All this the flower, all this is the fruit, all of this stuff my son brought from out of the field. He brought it and he gave it to his mama. And Rachel, you want it. Remember, Rachel's so hot headed and so temperamental and so impetuous that at the beginning of this lesson, she said if Jacob didn't give her a child, she'd die. That's yeah, what she said. She said it. You heard me. You heard it. I read it all right, straight out the Bible. And now she wants Leah, who is least loved by her husband. Who is trying her best to find out what she can do to do everything that she can so the husband will love her. And he's still loving Rachel. And Rachel seems like a hard person to deal with. To me. It just sounds like Rachel not the type of person that you can just love, you know, unconditionally. Well, it has to be unconditional. Because I mean, she 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 wants this woman mandrake. It says here in 15. And she said unto her. Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrake? This, this woman is, is appealing to her sensitivity, trying to play on her, I'm assuming her compassion. Isn't it enough that you done took my husband? Now, my, my son... You want my son Mandrake also? With a question mark behind. And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for, that, for thy son Mandrake. It's all the children. <laughs> she is pimping her husband. For a fruit or flower, whatever it is. He had no knowledge of it. She is making a deal with her sister in whom her husband has been with. She's given her handmaid to be with her husband so that she can have this child that she says she needs and wants so bad. And now she is pimping her husband out for a uh, fruit. If you let me have it, say that small thing to her. All right. He don't mean that much to me. Isn't that what she's saying? All right. All right. That's what she said. I'll read it again because I don't think y'all heard it. And it says, and she said unto her, it is a small matter that thou hast taken my husband, and wouldest thou now take away my son's mandrake also? And Rachel said, therefore he shall lie with thee tonight. For thy son Mandrake. Don't mean that to her. Just give me the fruit. Just give me the fruit. These are biblical characters. These are faithful, fallible people. Just like we are. All right, all right. We make mistakes along the way. God corrects us. And sometimes He turns those things that we would otherwise think of something else into a blessing. Yeah. Right. Listen what Hannah did. Listen what Hannah did when she when she wanted a child. Hannah, first Samuel, 1, 10 and 11. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on my on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. She vowed to give him back to the Lord. All right, all right. She cried with bitterness of soul, saying, this is what I want, Lord, and if you don't overlook me, that if you look down on me, if you be merciful unto me and give me this thing that I ask for, then I will give him back to you. All right. I just want to see him come into this world. Opposed to, if you don't give me a child, I'll die. Do you see the right way? All right. And the wrong way? All right. Now, these are, these are, these are ancestors of these people. These are the same lineage. But they had learned how to do it on down the line. First Samuel 1, 10, and 11, they had found out that 
God is God and he's God all by himself. You petition him, you ask him for what you want, and he'll give it to you. Not out of a jealous heart. All right, all right. And it said here, and Jacob came out of the field in the evening working. Have no idea what's happened. And Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee mm. Mm. with my son Mandre. I ain't gonna, I'm going to read the rest of it, but I got to give you the expression that Jacob probably had. <laughs> what? And he laid with her that night. Right. <laughs> I just want to see, want you to see the expression on his face first. But then once again, he just want to make his wife happy. Right. <laughs> Doing all he could do. Poor Jacob. Don't y'all feel it mean? Don't y'all feel it? <clears throat> Poor Jacob. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening and Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son Mandrake. And he lay with her that night. 17, and God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived. Remember, she had left off bear. Right. She had given her handmaid to bear children for right. Jacob. Right. Now God has blessed her, and she's conceived the fifth son. And Leah said unto God, said, God has given me my hire. Because I have given my maiden to my husband, and he called his name Ascar. Mm. And Leah conceived again in 19, and bare Jacob the sixth child. Jacob got six kids by Leah, who he really didn't like. Really didn't care nothing for. Remember, he got, she got tricked on him. So Jacob, 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 yeah. <laughs> And Leah said, God has endued, endowed me with a good dowry. And now will my husband dwell with me because I have borne him six sons mm. and she called his name Zebulon. Mm. He got to love me now. Mm. He got to love me now. I've been pregnant ever since we've been together. He has to love me now. Stop moving mountains. To make people love you that won't ever love you. All right, all right, all right. Stop changing and rearranging your whole life and your lifestyle to make someone love you who will never love you. All right, all right. You can't make a person love you regardless of what you do, regardless of what favor is required by him, regardless of what happens. You can't make him or her love you. That's right, that's right. Stop moving mountains. Stop changing your life and your lifestyle. Stop saying that it's me. Stop saying that if, it, if I hadn't done this or if I hadn't done that, that if I would do this or I would do that, then he loved me or she loved me. All right, man. God loves you more than, remember? All right. God loves you more than. Fill in the blank. Stop, Mason, stop, stop, stop fooling around. Leah has done everything that she could do. She's had six kids for this man, and he's still, still. 21. And after she bowed door and called her name Donna, Donna. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bowed son, 23. God has taken away my reproach. She realized that it was God. Now. At the very end, yeah. after she's done all of this moving and round and selling her husband off and giving her husband to other women yeah. out to, to have children, she realized that it may have been me. Yeah. Remember, I asked the question at the very beginning. Was it something that she did? Was it because she was complicit in this conspiracy to give her sister away to Jacob? Had she done some wrong, God had closed her womb for a purpose. Now she realizes that he has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph. Do you guys remember any of these names? Oh, yeah. 
We headed back to where we were. We headed back to the same place that we left off when we went back. I want everything to work jointly together. I want everything to fit just perfectly like a puzzle. So that when we get back to where we are, where we were, you'll remember everything that happened here. And maybe the people that you heard about will teach you about the people that you're going to get to learn. About the people that we've already known and why they have the proclivity, the, the tendencies, the habits that they have. And it says here, she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. I'm going to say this and I want you guys to remember this. Those that will keep listening to this broadcast, this program, I want you to remember this. A bald head fellow say, be careful what you ask for. Wow. He said he's going to give another <coughs> She said that that's what it means that she's going to have another child. All right, all right. Be careful what you ask for. All right. Dreadful things could happen. Terrible and tumultuous things could happen. Calamities could befall you. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you speak. These lessons are put forth to teach us a lesson. To give us some insight and understanding, right. hopefully to motivate us and inspire us and to empower us to do those things that God has for us to do. And learn from these people's mistakes. All right. These people weren't perfect. None of the people that you'll read about in the Bible are perfect save Jesus. He was the only one that came in sinless and stayed that way. He came so that these people and us <laughs> would have an opportunity All right. to see God one day. Right. Had not been for him coming, we would all be wretched and lost sin. Yeah. But because of God sending his son, we all have a chance. Yes. Don't let anybody make you feel bad because you're not where they think you ought to be. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let anybody make you feel bad because you've made a mistake or two. All right. All right. Don't let anybody put you down or diminish you in any way because you're not what they think you ought to be. Don't worry about what the daughters of the city or the brothers of the city say about you. It's what you think about yourself and how you feel about yourself. What do I say? What do I say all the time? Respect yourself. Be what God created you to be. Right. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. All right, all right. Teacher. This lesson is gonna get deep. The plot thickens. <laughs> but guess what you got to do to find out. You got to come back. Oh, oh boy. You got to come back. You got to come back. Right. You got to come back. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you first of all, Lord, oh, for yeah. just being here. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us from where we were to where we are right now, Lord. We pray, Lord, for enlightenment. We pray for understanding. We pray, Lord, that you take us to the places that you need us to go. And, Lord, that you give us direction once we get there, Lord, that we may be able to be a voice somewhere telling somebody about who you are and the goodness that you are and the goodness that you brought into each and every one of our lives. We know that we're not perfect, Lord. We know that we'll make mistakes along the way. But we ask that you continually forgive us, Lord. Please, Shed Lord. your grace Please. and mercy on us, Lord, that we may be able to move forward and do those things that you've intended for us to do, Lord. We realize that in you is everything that we need. The love that we need, Lord, the mercy that we need, the grace that we need, everything that we need, Lord, we know that we can find it in you. Yes, Lord. We ask that you, Lord, give us a spirit of peace. Give us a spirit of humbleness. Give us a spirit of praise that we may be able, Lord yes, Jesus, Lord. to lift you up in every corner of the world. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Give you all the honor. Give you all the praises for you deserve. Amen. Thank God. And as always, respect yourself and peace.